Brutal beauty standards throughout history. Pretty hurts. It's a phrase that's true for almost any point in history. And with painful cosmetic procedures being more popular than ever, it remains true to this day. But throughout history, both men and women, although mostly women, have had to fit the beauty mold that oftentimes can be brutal. That's why in this video, we'll be taking a look at some of the most brutal beauty standards that society has set throughout history. Some of these are downright unbelievable in the modern age, but it also goes to show that things might not have been that different after all. Now, without any further ado, let's dive in. Foot binding. Having an obsession with feet these days is considered kinda weird, but in ancient China, it was sort of an expectation. From the 10th century onwards, women in China were expected to have only the most perfect feet. But what makes a perfect foot? Their small size. Basically, the smaller the foot was, the better it was considered. That's why women in ancient China used to literally bind their feet from when they were children. As they grew older, instead of having the bones of their feet grow, they would simply break. By the 19th century, about half of all Chinese women had bound feet, but for upper-class women, these numbers were close to 100%. Even though the practice mostly stopped after that, some women who had bound feet were alive up until 2007. Lead Face Powder even though most people in Europe today consider tanning a symbol of beauty, which itself might be a dangerous beauty standard, back in the old days, being pale was all the hype. The paler you were, the higher your class was considered, since you didn't have to work in the sun all day. That's why both men and women in Europe used to apply face powder made out of, you guessed it, lead. What could possibly go wrong? Apparently, the lead powder didn't really make them paler, but the layer powder itself only gave them the appearance of being paler. It's believed that by the end of the 18th century, around 400,000 people died every year from lead poisoning in Europe. Thankfully, most of them already looked dead anyway. Corsets. Corsets are quite popular even today. But during the Middle Ages, up until the Victorian age in Europe, they were considered one of the most important beauty standards for women. The corsets were also radically different from the ones we see today. Instead of being made out of a cardboard-like material, they were made out of solid steel. The purpose was clear, to make sure women have as tiny of a waist as possible. Women were encouraged to fit into corsets that are multiple sizes too small, and waist training also became a thing during this time. They would start with a corset that was appropriate for their size, and then they would gradually start to go down a size, and they would always wear them. When women simply couldn't go down another size, some of them took to extreme measures like getting one of their ribs removed to fit in. Tooth Blackening Having the shiniest pearly whites is an almost universal beauty standard today. Regardless of what country or region you're in, having white teeth is generally considered healthier and prettier. But for Japanese women from the Kofun period in the 3rd century, pretty much the opposite was popular. It was considered trendy for Japanese women to have completely black teeth. The blackening process was known as ohaguro, and it symbolized healthy, well-taken-care-of teeth. It would hide any flaws that the teeth would have, and it was especially popular among the Japanese upper classes. Harmful chemicals were used to blacken the teeth, and the problems got so bad that in 1870, the reformist Japanese government outright banned the practice. Neck rings. Even though most of the beauty standards mentioned in this video are long dead, the neck rings of the Kayan people from Burma continue to be a beauty standard today. Kayan is a remote tribe that's mainly concentrated in the jungles of Myanmar, and they have an extremely unique standard of beauty, unlike anywhere in the world. Around the age of 12, when girls are thought to have become women, they start wearing multiple layers of brass rings around their neck. With the passage of time, more and more rings are added, which elongates their neck. The women with the longest necks are often considered the most beautiful. However, 
This leaves the women with disfigured collarbones and shoulders, along with their necks, of course. The practice persists to this day, and it was first written about in the 12th century by none other than Marco Polo. Dimple Machines In the early 20th century, Hollywood was undergoing its golden age, and the actresses that dominated the theaters were often the trendsetters of that time. During this time, many actresses donned extremely prominent dimples that complemented their bright smiles, and thus, a new beauty standard was born. Because of this, one woman named Isabel Gilbert created an ingenious machine that would allow any woman to have dimples. It was called the Dimple Machine, and it was a strange concoction that would wrap around a woman's cheeks, pressing against them and creating fake dimples. It sold out like hotcakes, made over $12,000 from them. In order for the machine to work, you would have to wear it all day and all night for weeks, if not months. The effect was also temporary, and it would go away in a few days if the machine wasn't constantly worn. That's a wrap for this video! Which of these beauty standards do you think will make a comeback? Let us know in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one!